Now, I was actually researching some stories, and this story actually caught my attention, so I definitely want to talk about this. This story comes out of Bronx, New York. That's such a beautiful little girl. When you hear these details, they'll break your heart, but I'm really doing this to really try to raise awareness, and I think there's a much deeper-rooted issue that might be triggering some for some of you people that might hear this for the first time if you've never been to my channel. So let me forewarn you. If somebody talking about issues going on with the black community, me speaking on my experience or speaking on things that I know, speaking on logic, if that type of thing triggers you, this might not be the video for you. Let me give you an even further disclaimer. Why? Because people love to complain, but don't act like you didn't know. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. So I'm just doing my best to try to make sure more people, if you've never been to my channel before, that is such a beautiful little girl that met her demise for absolutely no reason at all. But I'm getting this story from CBSNews.com, so thank you for the article. So Bronx. Police have charged a Bronx woman, a Bronx mother, after the death of her six-year-old daughter. Let me see. Jill. Jalea Eason, and I'm sorry they pronounced the name and wrote it in a very unique way, so it's hard to pronounce. Jalea Eason, who was found bruised and unresponsive in their apartment Friday. She so was six years old. Lanaya Eason, 26 years old, the mother, and I say it's Lanaya because it's spelled L Y N I J A, so I think that's Lanaya trying to spell it in a unique way. You know how the, the, the urban community, the the melanated community likes to try to make things unique and they want to spell things unique. So instead of Lanija, I think it's Lanaya. Lanaya Eason, 26 years old, a mother, was charged with acting in a manner injur injurious to a child, but it could be upgraded if the medical examiner rules her daughter's death to be a homicide, which that's what we're actually expecting. That's what we're expecting. So there's probably going to be an upgraded charge of murder. On Sunday, the investigation into how she died continued. CBS2 spoke to a family friend who was absolutely devastated. And in addition to the pain, there are so many questions surrounding this baby girl's death. There was a growing memorial inside the lobby of the Forest Houses on East 165th Street in Morrisania. That's where Jalea lived. And it was early Friday when police said that her mother called 911 to report that her daughter was unresponsive. Paramedics rushed to Jale rushed Jalea to the hospital where she was pronounced dead less than an hour later. It's a beautiful little girl. When officers entered the apartment, they also found an eight-year-old boy and a three-year-old girl who police say each had signs of bruising and ligature marks indicating restraints. Think about that. The eight-year-old told police his mother had hit him in the past. And I continue to keep saying this. If you spank and beat your children, you are not a suitable parent. Parenting is done up here. In the brain, in the mind, not here, not in the fist, not in the physical. We are not freaking slaves and cattle and dogs that need to be whipped and beat on. I thought black people was past Slavery and slavery, uh, slavery mentality, slavery tactics, I thought, but maybe we aren't. For those who knew his family, it's been surprising and a heartbreaking revelation. I'm so broken. This is disgusting. I don't even know her and I'm hurt, said a neighbor. This is really shocking, said Mike Velez, who lives in the building and everybody keeps to themselves here. When asked if she expected something like this to happen, Tiana Crawford said, absolutely not in a million years. Never did I think that I'd be standing here right now. She was so sweet, always showing me love, showing affection, always giving me a hug. Those things I will never forget. The medical examiner has yet to determine the exact cause of Jalea's death. 
As that process continues, her mother is in jail and her other two children are in the Administration for Children Services custody. Let me give you my theory. First of all, in the black community, in general, not all, not all, not all. So sisters, if it don't apply, then let it fly. But I'm going to speak my opinion based on the facts. One of the things that we deal with when it comes to our sisters that a lot of men don't like to deal with, in general, bad attitudes. Those bad attitudes, I believe, are bred and born as a hatred of your inner self, a hatred of yourself, a lack of self-esteem, which is always why they're always talking about things that are trying to prop their self-esteem up for unscrupulous reasons, for, for unearned reasons. Things like, call me a queen. We can do no wrong. Believe everything that a woman says and, 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 we are to be praised at all times and you never put your hands on a woman and all of these things that just have no value and no bearing at all. And you're just supposed to just praise and prop these adults up. But you would think as adults, you would need to be propped up if you had a proper upbringing, right? You should have all the confidence in the world like, hey, I don't even have to speak on it. I'm good. I'm good over here. I don't need to go around and tell everybody, hey, hey, y'all, hey, y'all, begging for attention. People that beg for attention to me are the people that really have the self-esteem issues. Well, let's talk about this self-esteem issue. Let me tell you guys what you will not get from any other channel except for mine, especially those talking about children specifically. I want to tell you why I believe this little girl was murdered, which is you're not going to get this. From any website. Besides me. I have a theory why I believe that this mother murdered her daughter. I believe that this mother murdered her beautiful, innocent, quiet, everybody loved this little girl daughter because she was jealous of her. When mothers give birth to these little girls, these little girls are generally untainted, better versions of the mother. I want y'all to think about what I'm saying. This is why it's dangerous in a lot of cases to date men and bring them around your young girls. Because if they like you and think that you sexy, what do you think that they're going to think about a little girl that's an untainted virgin version of you when they're 13, 14, 15, 16 years old. I'm talking about the, the mentality of the depraved. That's not normal for regular men. I'm talking about those depraved men, right? Everybody catch that? So what exactly does that mean? And why? And I, and, and I got to give a shout out to Tommy Sotomayor. And I got to give him a shout out because I've heard him mention this many, many times. Stories that he's told about mothers who have actually kicked their daughters out of their houses. Because I'm going to give it a slightly different twist than that. But this is still related. Kicking little girls out of the houses. I actually know of a girl in particular that I grew up with from middle school to high school. Super sweet person. She she's an awesome businesswoman now. A mother. I think she uh, she's divorced now, but she was married at one point. But doing the damn thing as an RN, and I'm super super proud of her. Her son is grown now. Super proud of him. I got to watch him from a little baby boy. He's grown now. But that's not the story for a lot of women that are forced out of a house and have to struggle and figure it out for themselves. That usually ends up. Leading to a life of violence, a life of drugs, a life of abuse. When they get kicked out of the house early. Everybody catch that? Maybe you women haven't experienced that. That are listening to this. But maybe you know a friend or a family member that has gone through that. We're talking about jealousy. This is where my point I think is different than most people's point. I had to write this down. 
women hate women. I used to say this thing where I say women follow women, which they do. Women don't follow men. There are a few women that men can get through to push their message out there. And then those women will disseminate that message. But in general, women will follow women. But there's a darker side of it. Because they think a lot like the Borg mentality. If you've never watched Star Trek, watch Star Trek, Deep Space Nine, Voyager. I love them all. If you learn about the Borg, the Borg says, we are Borg. You will be assimilated. And they have one body, one mind, one thought. They all believe the same thing. And too many times I see a lot of women who, be, who behave like a think tank. This all is related to this baby and why I think she died. They spit out a lot of the same messages that just don't make any sense. And I'm like, why, why do most women believe this? And why are they sharing this message and this, this hate for themselves? Spending money on shit that don't make no sense continuously disrespecting men, continuously encouraging the violence, and, and, and we only date thugs, and I won't date a man unless he has five bodies on, on, on his record. Like they love the thug zoo. Because they see that other women love the thug zoo. So when women go get red bottoms, they get them because other women like that shit. Men don't care about that stuff. Well, men raised by women, they do. I think they do. They care about Gucci belts and stupid shit like that, right? $15,000 belts. I go get me a belt from Walmart. It don't matter. They, that's the stuff that they care about. Another thing that they care about, finding a man and keeping a man. Here's a deeper issue. One would have to wonder why it is that they like the thug zoo and the thug lions. I've actually heard some YouTubers, a person in particular, I'm not going to say their name, that tries to make it seem like it's a power dynamic that these women are attracted to. And I've been thinking about this for a long time and I'm going to use this video as a cautionary tale to explain why I disagree with that. It doesn't have anything to do with a power dynamic. It literally has to do, it's a, it's a process selection. So what it is, is these type of women like to go for the bottom of the barrel because they hope that that man will have such low self-esteem about himself that he don't value himself or others, which I've said in other videos, when these boys don't grow up with fathers, they don't value themselves, therefore they're going to go out into society, they're not going to value anybody else, they don't give a shit about anything else, so if they don't give a shit about something, if somebody gives a shit about them when they ain't shit, which is usually going to be this pretty looking face, this woman right here, then that man will hold on to that woman for dear life because you got regular dudes out there that would love to get with that woman just based on looks alone. And they can't get them. Those men will, will fill up her inbox with all kind of messages, with all kind of lies, with all kind of enticements, will send her cash apps and send her money and all type of stupid shit. When in all actuality, all she wants is that thug. And it ain't for reasons that you think. It ain't that... Thugs have better sex than your 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 average Joe, your law-abiding citizens. It ain't like their dicks are any longer or any wider, or that or that or, or that they ejaculate any harder or or or, or more sexually experienced than your law-abiding citizen. It ain't about that. I know a lot of law-abiding citizens that go to the gym and they're toned. Or even, I've even heard women say that they don't necessarily need a man with a six-pack. Some of them, like a man like me, they got, they got a dad, they, they got a beer belly, they got a dad stomach. They like a little something to hold on to. I'm not saying from personal experience, maybe I am, maybe I'm not, I'm not going to say. It's for lack of self-esteem. Those men don't value themselves, which is why they're able to kill people so easily, end up in jail, and they don't give a shit. They're just like, well, he gave me life. He gave me triple life. It is what it is. 
So I might as well just go ahead and set up my commissary, kick back, and I'll be in there with the homies. They don't give a shit about the consequences. They don't even care about dying. Why don't they care about dying? Because they don't have any self-esteem. They have nothing to look forward to. That's why they can behave this way so easily. Why am I bringing all of that mentality up? Because I believe that women hate women. And here's why I say that. Let's not look at it in general and just a general woman out there. Women look at all women as competition, whether big, small, fat, ugly, black, white, brown, or whatever. They don't want no woman around their thug man. Because they all tend to be attracted to the same things. Think tank. Borg mentality. This is why a man that most women want, all those women go after that one man. Oh shit, he likes him? Oh, y'all all like this man? You want to get with him? You going to give him some? We going to go over there too. And they all go, they all will combine on that one man. That's how you can end up with a man, one man, I think, uh, two men, I think, uh, I don't remember who did that story. I want to give credit to Tommy for that, if I'm not mistaken. Like, there were two men responsible for 42 babies. And these dudes didn't have a dime to their names. But they was having all the unprotected sex in the world that they could ever stand. To end up pre creating and producing 42 something kids. Women hate women. They don't want women around their men. Including their own daughters. One thing that I know. Is that when mom brings in a man. That is not the biological father of these kids. She understands that this little girl looks like her. She understands that this little girl is going to grow up. She understands that that little girl is going to eventually bud and get thicker and her hips are going to widen. She's going to be pretty and she's untainted at this point, which means that there is a good likelihood if this man finds the mom attractive, guess who else he's going to find attractive? Have I lost anybody yet? I'm pretty sure I probably lost about 500 people. Y'all are probably already unsubbed, right? Mm hmm. Just just natural selection. <laughs> that little girl is going to eventually grow up to be a much better version of her mom. So this is why generally these women feel threatened, especially when they're trying to keep a man. They rather keep that man and kick the girl out. And all they're trying to do is just Get her away from their man because they understand that women outnumber men and there's a less likelihood of them being able to find a man that they can actually keep, which is why they usually are digging at the bottom of the barrel, hoping that a man has low enough self-esteem about himself to stay there under any circumstances. I believe that the mother, and this is, I have to bring this all full circle. So everything that I said means this right here. I believe that this pretty mother, good looking mother, killed her beautiful daughter because she saw her daughter as up and coming competition and she hated her daughter for that. She, she might have liked her daughter, never loved her, she might have liked her from the beginning when she was cute and her daughter was able to elicit attention for her. Y'all catch that? When you when you take pictures with your babies and you're posting them, they're like, oh, that's so cute. And you did such a good job and mom and this and that. They pat mom on the butt. But then when the little girl starts to get a little bit older, they're not doing that so much anymore. Now the little girl is starting to get attention on her own without the mom. Now the mom becomes jealous. Now the mom looks at the little girl as a threat. Now the mom is now seeing the girl as an inevitable threat to her potentially not having a man, which breeds hate. It breeds envy. And hate and envy is a deadly combination for a murder. How about that? 
How about that? Any little thing that that girl do. Or you you did, you did dropped a piece of paper on the ground. You spilled some milk on the floor. She'll use that opportunity to take out that engulfed enragement in her out on her daughter, which led to this little girl's death. Let me give you guys the fair usage. I hope I didn't get too deep on y'all. I hope I didn't lose y'all. And I hope what I said made some goddamn sense. Because there's no reason for us to keep making children and we're going to continue to keep treating them like this. I'm sick of people like this representing our black community. Absolutely tired of it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. If y'all have never heard me speak like that before, this is what I always do. I use these stories as cautionary tales to try to teach because if you don't see the deeper meaning, then we will never get to a solution. It's deeper than just a news story. Medical examiner's office is yet to determine the cause of death of the six-year-old who died in the Bronx Friday. Her mother has been charged with endangering the welfare of her two other children. And as CBS 2's Alice Gaynor reports, more charges could follow. Community members and tenants of this building at Forest Houses released balloons Monday afternoon in honor of six-year-old Jalea Eason. This little out of mind. Police say the child's mother called 911 Friday morning just before 4 a.m. When they arrived, they found the little girl unresponsive with bruising on her wrists and torso. She was later pronounced dead at a local hospital. 26-year-old Linnea Eason was questioned here at the 42nd Precinct and charged over the weekend with acting in a manner injurious to a child less than 17 years old. Police say it was due to significant past injuries to her two other children ages eight and three, and also because of the condition of the home, which was not habitable for a child and lacked proper food. The 12th floor apartment has since been bolted shut by police. Eason was arraigned and released with an ankle monitor. The Administration for Children's Services said in a statement, quote, the safety and well-being of New York City's children is our top priority. We are investigating this case with the NYPD. The safety of the other children in the home has been secured. Sources say Eason and has two prior ACS cases involving her son, and police have responded in the past for domestic disturbances, though we do not know specifics. We know ACS is overwhelmed. Stephanie McGraw is the founder of domestic violence group We All Really Matter, or WARM. People become numb. So we're here today to say, wake up. You had an opportunity to save a life. We had an opportunity to save a life. Outside the complex, a growing memorial filled with candles and messages to the child. Many who didn't even know her felt compelled to come and share this message with others. If you see, see, see something, say something. In the Morrisania section of the Bronx, Alice Gaynor, CBS 2 News. Didn't even know her felt compelled to come and share this message with. Y'all see what they're writing up there? What's the message? Hashtag. See something, say something. I like to think that a lot of people have heard my channel and I think we've popularized that. I like to believe that. It, I, I know some people don't think I did, but I like to think I did. You know, A lot of people have seen my channel. See something, say something. When I first heard this, it kind of brought me to tears and I, I was crying on the inside. And I was thinking like, wow, man. Thank y'all for continuing to share that. Simple but very powerful message of see something, say something. That meant something to me. Messages to the child. Many who didn't even know her felt compelled to come and share this message with others. If you see, see, see something, say something. In the market, many who didn't even know her felt compelled to come and share this message with others. If you see, see, see something, say something. In the Morrisania section of the Bronx, out. A Bronx mother is in custody charged with child endangerment after her six-year-old daughter was found dead in their apartment. CBS 2's Naveen Dhaliwal has more on how that little girl is being remembered tonight in Morrisania. A memorial in the lobby of East 165th Street has grown to the outside. Candles in the shape of a J to remember little Jalea, who was so loved. She was the sweetest girl I ever met in my life. 
Tayana Crawford could barely hold back the tears as she spoke about the six-year-old. She shared these memories from a few years ago. She was just so sweet, like, always wanted to give me a hug, show me love, give me affection, like, those things I'll never forget. Two days after the little girl was found dead in her 12th floor apartment, police say with marks on her body and wrists, her mother, 26-year-old Lania Eason, is now charged with child endangerment. No problems, like, I just don't understand. But clearly, there was something wrong. Police say two other children, an eight-year-old boy and three-year-old girl, also in the apartment, both had signs of bruising and ligature marks indicating restraints. The eight-year-old even told police his mother had hit him in the past. Anyone that lived close enough can hear those kids from time to time. A neighbor who lives below the apartment, one floor down, says on several occasions she heard children crying. Their screams at times were deafening. As the details on how exactly Jalea died had yet to be determined, those close to her say her sudden passing makes no sense. Unexplainable. As friends and neighbors mourn little Jalea's death here, her mother sits in jail. Her two other children are in ACS custody. In the Morrisania section of the Bronx, Naveen Dhaliwal, CBS 2 News. I look at it a couple different ways, and I'll conclude by saying this. We could look at this story. It's just sad. We can cry. We can kumbaya. We can release balloons and light candles and just say RIP to this beautiful little girl. Or I think that we could pay homage and real respect to her by learning where this comes from, like what I just explained. And you'd have to ask yourself, this little girl is very small, it's very innocent, it's very, it's very loved out there. The neighbors said, oh, she's very, she's very sweet, she's very nice. And you'd have to ask yourself, if a little girl is as good as a little girl can get, what would enrage a human being to this extent? For all of the reasons that I just explained earlier, and the fact that I say that the mother sees this little girl as competition, that's truly where that level of rage, because that is hate. That's where that level of rage comes from that caused her to end her daughter's life. Because that little girl did absolutely nothing to deserve this. This baby couldn't speak for herself nor defend herself against the tyranny of her own mother. This deep-rooted hate is very deep. And it's, and it's very widespread in the community. And sometimes these children only survive what they're forced to go through with their parents and caretakers. And this little girl, unfortunately, didn't. There was no reason for this. You know, if you asked for somebody to take custody of this little girl, they absolutely would have did it. You asked me, look, Jay, I, I, I know you ain't, you know, Jay, can you take custody of this little girl? Damn it, I'm going to do my best. I'm like, you know what? Give her to me. That's why I wish there were a hundred more me, maybe a thousand more me's. And I would do my best to just try to give these children an opportunity to grow up and become something great. Make sure that they can eat. Make sure that they got a place to lay their heads and to clean themselves. Clothing on their back. Electricity. Can go to school. Do what they need to do. Make friends. And go out into the world and just be great. Learn. Absorb. Go start a company. Go change the world. Be the next president. Solve world hunger. Make sure that our veterans never have to be starving in the streets and have a place to stay. It might not be us, but it might be this younger generation of babies coming up with just amazingly bright ideas and, and do things that we never thought were possible. But we got to give them a chance. I pray for kids like my daughter and all of these children out there that they can go out into the world and just be great. Keep that baby in your prayers. R.I.P. Beautiful little girl. To the mother, give her life, give her life sentence. She ain't gonna learn. Hashtag TTO. There's no reason for her to ever procreate again. Pray for her other kids that they can grow up and become something great in the hands of somebody else. But thank you guys so much for listening with an open mind. And thank y'all so much from my heart to yours. For allowing me to just be real. And this is one of the realest videos I've made in a long time. Really just speaking from the heart. And speaking from things that I know to be facts. 
But thank y'all so much for sticking with me. Like, share, subscribe to the AFC Podcast. We put children first. I love you all. Y'all have a great day. Have a great night. We'll see you on the next story. Peace.